Sundance, whose ceremony is considered the Holy of Holies in Lakota spirituality. The Sundance ceremony has to do with our outer identity, that's cultural identity. Your identity is consisted of two parts. One is your cultural identity, and one is your human identity. And the one that's more important is your human identity, because your grandmother Earth does not see you as your skin color. She sees you as a grandchild. And to answer her, we must communicate as humans, and not as our culture. Culture is beautiful, but that's not the emphasis. The emphasis is on you yourself as a ikche wichasha, a human man, or ikche wia, a human woman. This is way more important, and how you live your life is also more important than the ceremony, than any ceremony, because your life is a ceremony. And you are the sacred item. You are a blessing. You were created that way through a very sacred process. And when anything is created through a sacred process, the product is also sacred, which means you are sacred. So how you live your life is way more important than what ceremony you do or how many ceremonies you do. I need to add this first. That that's more important. It's how you live your life. These ceremonies have the tendency today for people to separate themselves from others. And they say, we do this ceremony and that makes us more holy. And this makes us better. And this makes us smarter. And this makes us more spiritual. See, they're heading only in one direction. That's linear thinking. And that kind of thinking leads to people thinking that they're better than others. And if you don't agree, then you're their enemy. This is not the way. This is not the way of our grandmother Earth. I have to add these things in there because that's really the tendency today. That people, they want to believe that just because they do this certain ceremony and they do it a whole bunch of times that they think it makes them better. Somebody will say, I've been doing this for 16 years. Another guy is going to say, that's nothing. I've been doing it for 29. So everybody says, whoa. You see what I mean? This is not humble. This is not humility. And that violates Lakota virtue. So this is why I want to interject these things. I'm going to discuss these things because it is part of our Lakota culture. But... People today are dualistic thinkers. And so their tendency is to think that if they do this ceremony, it makes them better than others. And that's not the purpose. But I do want to say the difference between what is linear and what is not. I just explained to you what linear is. Linear is when you only go one direction and you think that the further you go, the better you get. In spirituality, people make up all these courses and they'll say, oh, I got a certificate in Reiki and a certificate in Shaky and a certificate in Takey. And do you think the earth gives a shit about your certificates? No, she doesn't. That doesn't matter. That's man's way of patting himself on the back and saying, look how good I am. And you can be good like me too if you take this course. That's all selfishness that creates that. Because people who take these kind of courses, they do this because they don't feel good about themselves. They need outside validation. And they need these certificates so people can say, Wow, gee, you're good. You have all those certificates. Geez, you're amazing. See, they want to hear that because they have low self-esteem. And low self-esteem is a result of duality. That's linear thinking. Non-linear thinking is when you go any direction. You can learn in any direction. For example, if you're at peace with your past, you can look at that part. 
especially if it's something that happened a long time ago, you can look at it because you've changed, you've developed, you can see more. So you can look into the past and you'll see new things because you're different. You're more developed. It doesn't mean you're better, it just means you're more developed. So you learn something new by going into the past. Also, when you come to peace with your difficulties from your past, you're also learning new things too. So that's going backwards. Jumping way in the future, you can visualize your future, how you would like it to be, and visualize that you're already there and you enjoy it in your mind. That's why it's called visualization. Now you're visualizing it and you're enjoying it as if it's happening right now. And while you're doing that, you're getting medicine. You're feeling good. You do that several minutes a day. And then you come back to the present moment because this is the most important moment. And then as soon as you come back from your visualization, your visualization imprints or embeds something into your brain like a pattern into your brain and that's going to cause your brain to receive inspiration, ideas that are in line with what you want to accomplish in the future. So you're learning from the future. You're getting medicine from the future. As long as it's all healthy. And as long as you remember that when you do this, this doesn't make you better. It just means you're learning. Never think you're better just because you know a lot of things. You just know things, that's all, but it doesn't make you better. It just makes you more responsible. So, this is nonlinear. And our stories are like that. They're nonlinear. So, a lot of people, including Indians, because today's Indians are mostly linear thinkers, they have difficulty following Lakota stories because they don't really go one after the other. They kind of go sideways sometimes. <laughs> and that's when people have a hard time understanding. They'll say, hey, wait a minute. I thought this guy died in the other story. How come he's still alive in this one? <laughs> you see what I mean? That's linear thinking. And to understand it, you have to be a non-linear thinker. Then it makes sense. So non-linear is you're a person of peace. You look for at least three perspectives to everything. And you learn from the past and from the future. And from the present moment as well. They're all connected. That's non-linear. So, people who do these ceremonies today they think that the more they do, that the better they become. And that's linear thinking. And that's the duality. That's not the ancestral way. It violates humility and respect, compassion, generosity. It violates a lot of things. The sun dance is part of the male cycle. Women have seven stages of development. Men have four. This is why the numbers seven and four are sacred for us. Now, when that happened, this created an imbalance between men and women. But in time, men were given three ceremonies to come back into balance with women. And Sundance is one of those ceremonies. The sweat lodge is another one. And crying for a vision, Hamblecha is the third one. These are for men only because they need it. Women don't. Women in their menstruating years don't need these things. And if they do them, then they throw it off balance again. Which means they're going against their very nature. And that's akin to ripping their hearts out and throwing it on the ground. Which is when they're killing their own nation. These are really ancient, ancient things here that I'm saying. So again, I'm going to say it one more time. These ceremonies, when I say they're for men, it's not because men are better. It's the opposite. 
We need them to come back into balance with womankind. So there's things that happen inside a woman that do not happen inside of a man. And this also plays a role. Why men have to do these ceremonies? For women, it's internal. For men, it's external. This is how we can complement each other. So neither gender is more important than the other as long as these ceremonies are in place and that the rules are followed concerning them. So, talking about some of the goofy things that happen concerning that, I just found out today that, and I won't say which reservation it is, but it's a reservation that has a casino. And they're doing a Sundance in the area, not at the casino, but there's a Sundance happening someplace on that reservation. And when the day of dancing is over, some of the dancers head over to the casino. This casino has a hotel. So they go sleep in the hotel room for the night with their family. And then next morning they get up, take a shower, and then go back to the Sundance area and continue to Sundance. This is really a violation. So I'll tell you why. The Sundance ceremony is actually 12 days long. For the sun dancer, the first four days are days of preparation, and this is where they separate from their families, and then they just stay with other sun dancers, and there's a certain location at the sun dance grounds that they have to stay because they're slowly getting into the sun dance frame of mind. They're leaving the normal world, so to speak. On the fourth day of preparation is tree day. That's when they cut the tree down. There's a sacred way of doing that. There's a sacred way of delivering it to the Sundance Circle. And there's all kinds of things that happen before it's put up for the ceremony. I'm not going to say what those are because I know there's new agers listening and they're writing all this down. So I'm going to give out just the important highlights here. So... That's what happens in the first four days. The second four days is the days of the dancing. On the third and fourth dancing days, that's when the dancers pierce. And then after those four days are done, then the dancers, again, still stay separate from their family. But in the last four days is a conclusion time. And that's when they slowly come back to the normal world. And then on the last conclusion day, they come back to their families. So you see, the sun dancers are always supposed to be at the sun dance arena. And they sleep on the ground because of Grandmother Earth. There is a special reason for this, but I'm not going to go into it. It's really a sacred reason. But they especially are supposed to have direct contact with the ground. So they're not supposed to be in a hotel room, laying on a bed with air conditioning blowing. They're not supposed to be doing that. That kills the ceremony. And I heard that, I was like, geez, it's getting ridiculous now. It's really getting ridiculous. (laughs) My goodness. Sun dancers going to the hotel room after each night, yeah? <laughs> That's not even, you know, I mean, jeez, it just doesn't make sense. It's so stupid. How can you stay in a sun dance frame of mind when at the end of the day you're going to a hotel room? And even then, at the end of the day, they go back to their families each day. And they're not supposed to even do that. Because to make the ceremony effective, they have to not be a part of this normal earth time. They have to be part of a sacred earth time, but not the normal one. And going back to your families breaks that during the days of the ceremony. And so to go to hotels even... More ridiculous. So that's really, really not right. And there are no exceptions. 
And some people might say, what? But then that guy has a medical situation. Well, if he has a medical situation, he's not supposed to be doing the ceremony. That's the other thing. Back in the 1980s, they issued this alert to all Sundances. Is that they wanted, for those that are piercing, that they have to now bring their own piercing tools. And that they have to be sterilized. Because HIV had just entered the world. And this is why they were saying that. That was in the mid-1980s when that was going around. Because before, the medicine man that's doing the ceremony, usually he brought his own knife and he'd be piercing everybody who was supposed to be getting pierced. But they changed that rule because of this HIV. And so they said, okay, now the dancers have to bring their own sterilized piercing tools. So when they are going to lay down to get pierced, they bring their own knife and they give it to the medicine man, then he does the piercing. But it's the dancer had to bring their own knives after this HIV thing started, which makes sense. Okay, well, back several years ago, I know a white woman who's married to a Crow Indian, and they live in California. And this Crow Indian guy comes to one of the sun dances on Pine Ridge every year. And he didn't want to bring his wife. Yeah, He always wants to come alone. He said, this is an Indian thing, he said. <laughs> Gee, not that. Why did he marry a white woman if that's the way he feels? You know what I mean? And so <laughs> she just, yeah, well, whatever, you know. If you don't want me there, then okay, she said. So here, after the ceremony was over, see, he drove, yeah, it was about two, three day drive. And he called saying he was ready to he was going to be heading out, so they were expecting him in a couple of days. And a couple of days later, he never showed up, so they were getting concerned. And finally, he showed up several days late, and he was barely driving. And they thought, geez, he drunk? Because he was really looked out of it. So he pulled in, didn't even make it into their driveway. He was still on the street. He just was laying there, so they all ran out saying, what's going on? And he said, yeah, well, ever since the ceremony's over, I said, I've been sick. So I had to pull over by the side of the road and sleep for a while, he said, until I feel better than I drive again. He did that all the way back from South Dakota to California, stopping off and on like that to doze off by the side of the road. His wife said, geez, you're really look in bad shape. No, I'm okay, he said. And he said, yeah, my chest kind of hurts, but that's from the the piercing. So she said, let me take a look at it. And he said, no, that's an Indian thing. And she said, hell with you. Let me take a look at it, she said. He was too weak to fight her off, so she threw off his hands and lifted up his shirt. And here, she really freaked out. She couldn't believe what she saw. And she said, we need to get you to the hospital now. No, 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 he said. That's that's white man's medicine, he said. I just need Indian medicine. I'll be all right, he said. And she said, you're going to die if we don't get you to the hospital. And he was like, no, you're wrong. You white people don't know things. You don't. You just you have to be Indian to understand, he said. And he was so weak. And she just basically dragged him to the hospital. He, he couldn't even fight her because he was so weak. So she pushed him to the passenger side and buckled him up and got in the car and drove to the emergency right away. The nurses saw him and they, they were like, oh my goodness, let's get him in right now. They were really freaked out. The nurses were saying, what happened to him? Did he get beat up? And she said, no, he did a Native American ceremony where they pierced themselves in the chest. I mean, they took him in emergency immediately. They had to operate and do transfusion and things like that. And then they put him on dialysis because it turned out he's diabetic. And the other thing is that the doctor said the only way this could have happened this severe, he said, is that whatever was used to pierce his skin was dirty. So this is very serious. His chances are really high that one more day, he would have been dead. 
You brought him in at the last possible moment of saving him, he told the wife. And she started to cry. So he almost died. So then she called up the people in South Dakota and was trying to get the details on what happened. And here it turned out that it was a Navajo guy was doing the piercing. And he was using the same knife on everybody. So what he would do is he would just wipe the blade with a handkerchief and then pierce the next guy's. So he was spreading disease doing this. When she told this to me, it infuriated me. Because I was like, what is a Navajo Indian doing being a part of a Lakota ceremony? Because you remember what I said at the beginning? This is a tribal thing. This has to do with a tribal identity, cultural identity. Crow Indians are a totally different culture. They have different ceremonies. See, people who think that we're all the same, but we're not. Our languages sound vastly different. I was really surprised that this Navajo Indian guy was a young guy. He was really inexperienced. Why did the Sundance leader give him all that responsibility when the guy was young and inexperienced and he was not even Lakota? Why was he giving him that responsibility? And remember what I said, in the mid-1980s, this proclamation went out to all Sundances. They even announced it at powwows, that anybody who's going to Sundance from here on out, they have to carry their own piercing utensils. It turned out that this Navajo Indian, when he was piercing dancers, some of the dancers had their own knives. But the Navajo Indian said, Nope, I'm just using mine. So even though a lot of the dancers had their own knives, this Navajo guy was not using it. He was only using his own on everybody. I asked the wife, did you know he's diabetic? And she said, yeah, he takes diabetes medicine. He gives him a shot every day. And I was like, my goodness, why must people corrupt the ceremony? And I said to her, on the real good ceremony, you have to tell whoever is running that ceremony, you have to inform them that you're in good health and that if you're diabetic, you're not supposed to be doing the ceremony. If you're diabetic, you're not supposed to be doing any ceremonies. That is a rule in Lakota ceremonial life. If you have diabetes or high blood pressure or any kind of health problem, you're not supposed to be in the ceremony. It doesn't matter if you have a diabetes that's manageable and you're taking medication and everything is on the up and up. It doesn't matter. If you have it, even a tiny little bit, you're not supposed to be doing that ceremony. If you've done two years and then after that you discover you have diabetes, your son dad's career is over. But that's not a problem. That is not a bad thing. Because the more important identity is your human identity. When you say that you're Ikchewichasha, that's a human man. Or for women, Ikchewiya, that's a human woman. That's what's important. The other thing I was saying is, how come a Crow Indian was doing a Lakota ceremony? Because Crow Indians are a complete different animal. I mean, these guys, are usually they're very, very exclusive. That their ceremonies are for them only. No outsiders are allowed. Which is correct. Because this is a tribal thing. I had a friend from New York City and one time there was a fake medicine man that was coming over to New York City to speak at the Indian Museum. Whenever there are speeches and talks and discussions, she always goes to listen because she wants to learn. So she went to go check this out, see what was going on. This guy said he's from the Pine Ridge Sioux Tribe and that he's a medicine man. So she went to go see what he had to say. 
so she took notes down. One of the things he said was that Lakota people are matriarchal, which is false. We're not matriarchal, and we're not patriarchal either. We're something different. Then he was trying to teach... (laughs) He was saying something that was totally off the wall. It violated Lakota star knowledge. From based on what he said, it told me he didn't know Lakota star knowledge. Well, he was speaking from a Christian perspective from a Catholic perspective. But she didn't know these things. Yeah, she's just now learning. And then she noticed that this guy kept looking at her all the time. And then after his talk was over, he was hobnobbing with people that were there. She wanted to ask him a few things and just shake his hand and tell him she enjoyed the discussion, that she was going to go home. So she was waiting, and then he went up to her, and he invited her to the sun dance. There's a traditional way to do that. It involves a branch from a certain tree. And you have to decorate this branch in a certain way. And when you go to the person that you want to invite, you give this tree branch to that person, and there's a certain phrase that you say. So remember, this branch has to be decorated a certain way. This is the way you invite somebody to a sun dance. You don't do it in a museum. That's really, really improper. Medicine men are never supposed to leave the reservation. Medicine men, they have to be there for their people. A real medicine man is busy every day of his life and that he has no time to travel, to give speeches, and he's not supposed to accept money. That's the way of the medicine man. And they see themselves as servants. They never see themselves as leaders. There was a sun dance in Colorado, and this fake medicine man was doing this sun dance, and he had a bunch of New Agers there, and they got him an RV with air conditioning and a satellite dish. So in between sessions, he would go to the RV to cool off while the sun dancers are melting out in the sun. (laughs) That is a gross violation. A medicine man stays with the dancers at all times. What I just explained earlier about this 12-day thing, that the medicine man is going to be with the dancers the whole 12 days. He's not going to separate. If he's married, he's not even going to go talk to his wife. He's going to stay away from his own family, just like the dancers are. So to go to an RV, why is it that he's in the RV with a satellite dish even, at a sun dance? On the sun dance premises, he's in the RV with the satellite dish and air conditioning. Do you see what I mean when I say the sun dances are becoming circuses? This guy is really tricky because he can say really, really nice things, but he has an agenda behind it. What he says is his candy storefront, but what's behind it is something really unhealthy. This is not a medicine man. This is a guy who's disguising himself as one. So, air-conditioned RV with a satellite dish, my goodness. He had his New Agers really supporting him luxuriously. So for several years, he moved his Sundance from Colorado to Pine Ridge. A relative had land on Pine Ridge. He would use that. So all these New Agers would come. Pine Ridge is probably one of the worst places to go for Sundance because there's so many people like this that are really fake. Rosebud is like that too. And Standing Rock and Cheyenne River are starting to become this way now as well. So people are seeing this ceremony as a status symbol. They're seeing it as a way to hook up with women by trying to impress them. And it's The wrong energy is in these ceremonies now. And when you have a medicine man who's going to be living in an air-conditioned RV with a satellite dish on top, 
that, my friends, is out of line. So, there's a lot of evidence that he really doesn't know Lakota Star knowledge. Because if he did, he wouldn't be doing what he is doing. So, gross violations, yeah? Thank you very much for taking the time to listen to this video. And if you would like to send a special thanks, please look at the bottom of the video where you see the title of this video. And you see something like uh, the like button. And then it says dislike, share, slide that area towards the left. And you see some other buttons there. You see a download button and then a thanks button, which is shaped like a heart. If you would like to send a special thanks, you can click that thanks button and I would really appreciate the support for this channel. And I will see you in the next video. In our culture, everything is circular. So there's no word for goodbye. So instead, we say until next time, which in Lakota is Doksha Ake. To learn more about Lakota spirituality, I have written a book called Wichocha Otehike. This book also includes Lakota star knowledge information. All the videos that I make, which are about Lakota spirituality, Lakota star knowledge, and cultural information, are based on this book. This book costs 99 American dollars. This price includes the shipping cost as well as a tracking number. And to learn more about Lakota language, I have written a Lakota language book called Chante Etanha Owoglake, Speaking from the Heart. And all my Lakota language videos are based on this book. This book costs 119 American dollars. This price includes the shipping cost as well as a tracking number. I also teach online and I give spiritual consultations as well. If you are interested in any of my services and products, you can send payment via PayPal to my email address, which is hechaka7 at yahoo.com. That's H E H A K A, the number seven, at yahoo.com. When you send your payment, please include your shipping address and your email address. Ho, oh, Lila Pilamaelo. Thank you very much.